Good morning. Welcome to God's house here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. It's great to have the chance to be with you here today and gather around God's word together as a family of faith. Uh, and in fact, in our worship today, we're thinking about how we want to continue in God's word. Um, our theme for today is build on the rock of God's word. Uh, we call it our Christian Education Sunday, where we focus on the fact that that's really important, to continue in the word, not just to grow in the number of facts about God that we know, or to increase you know, our knowledge of Bible trivia or something like that, but it's to grow in God's word so that God the Holy Spirit can continue to build up our faith um, so that we can trust, him in, trust in him when difficulties arise and when we're, we're hurting or sad and we have that foundation to know that our God loves us and he forgives us and he's promised to always be with us. So that's going to be the focus of our worship today. And we will begin then by joining in our opening hymn. Please stand. We'll follow the order of service this morning that's printed for you in your worship folders, and it's also on the screen behind me. Oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O oh God. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Thank you. 
You may be seated. Our God speaks to us in his word this morning, first of all, from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11. And here, this is when the children of Israel had been making their way through the, through the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, they'd already left Egypt, and they were about to enter the promised land. And God, uh, through Moses, their leader, was reminding the people, all right, now when you finally get there, don't forget God. Don't forget what he did for you. Don't forget everything that's happened to get you to this point, because that's how our human nature works. Um, if things are going great, we think, all right, awesome. Um, I guess I'm doing pretty good all by myself. No, remember that God is the one who is with you. Uh, and just like we want to continue to remember God's promises to us in his word, regardless of what's going, around, going on around us in our lives at the moment. So we read from Deuteronomy 11. Love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God, his majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm, the signs he performed, and the things he did in the heart of Egypt, both to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his whole country, what he did to the Egyptian army, to its horses and chariots, how he overwhelmed them with the waters of the Red Sea as they were pursuing you, and how the Lord brought lasting ruin on them. It was not your children who saw what he did for you in the wilderness until you arrived at this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab the Reubenite, when the earth opened its mouth right in the middle of all Israel and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that belonged to them. But it was your own eyes that saw all these great things the Lord has done. Be careful, or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you, and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain, and the ground will yield no produce, and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. The word of the Lord. We'll continue with our psalm of the day, which is a version of Psalm 78. Um, our soloist will be, will be singing the song, but the congregation can join in uh, as you feel comfortable. Praise. 
Our God also speaks to us in his word from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 2. And here Paul was reminding this congregation in the city of Corinth, but God is also reminding us that human wisdom is one thing, what what people of the world think is smart and wise. Um, And that's not what Paul brought to that church, and that's really not what we as a congregation bring to you. Instead, we want to bring God's wisdom. Uh, what God tells us in his word, because without that, there's things that we would just never know unless God had revealed it to us. You know, the the fact of God sending his one and only son to free us from our sins isn't something that someone could just figure out on their own. Uh, We needed God to reveal that to us, and we continue then with God's word to proclaim his wisdom. So we read from 1 Corinthians 2. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the, not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. The word of the Lord. And I invite you then to please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel for today is from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, and this will also serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. And we'll invite any children who wish to come to the carpet here uh, for a brief children's message. And if anyone does have an offering, they can put it in the, in the bucket here on their way up. All right. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? Good. Doing okay? All right. Um, does anyone know how tall you are? Anyone know your exact height off the top of your head? Not really. Anyone willing to let me measure you? I brought, this is a yardstick, but can I, can I measure one of you? Can we see how tall, some, who, who's willing? All right, come on up. All right, let's see now. We'll see now. If you're, if you're taller than this, I'm going to have to kind of guess. So this is, do not write this on any medical forms, because this might not be, 
You think you're 60 inches? I don't think you're quite 60 inches. 64. I don't think so, because look, this, so one of these, this is like a yardstick. One of these is 36 inches, so that's, that's three feet. And if it's 36 here, about your shoulder, and then if we go up here and we add a, maybe another 10 more, so I think you're about 46 inches, okay? So now three feet, 10, okay? So, all right. So now my question, though, have you always been that exact height, do you think, your whole life? Have you just been, from the moment you were brought home from the hospital, were you that exact height, do you think? I don't think so, right? Because that, be, that would be like a world record for a baby, right, to be that, to be that, that tall. But no, so you, you've grown, right? And all of you here, you know, you guys are growing. But does anyone know, how do you grow? Like, how do you get taller? How does that, what needs to happen for you to get taller? What do you think? Hmm, yeah, what do you think? You need to eat, right? So do you guys eat, eat things? Yeah, sure, you guys eat stuff. Um, so when you eat stuff, that helps you grow. And maybe sometimes, you know, there's maybe some things that you really like to eat and some things you don't like as much, but to help you grow, you know, there's, there's healthy things that you should eat, you know? Uh, like, what's something that's good to eat, do you think? Do you have anything that, that would be good and healthy to help you grow? Mango juice. Mango juice, very specific. Mango juice, uh, yeah. Right? That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had mango. Oh, no, I have. I have. I have. Um, yeah, one more. Broccoli. broccoli. Now, is that is that anybody's favorite broccoli? Really? Like Your favorite? Broccoli. See, okay, yeah. Some people don't want to eat broccoli at all, but it is one of the things. Now, if you don't eat broccoli, there's other things you can eat that are good, too. But yeah, you want to eat healthy things to help you keep growing. But today, what we're talking about... Um, there's a, there's a passage, I don't have it on the screen, but there's a passage that says that we want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a kind of growing that isn't, isn't like growing, growing with the, you know, how tall you are, but it's growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. So talking about growing in our faith, how do we do that? Because that we don't do by eating. Right? You can't grow in your faith by eating the right thing. How would we grow in our faith, do you think? This is kind of a hard one. How would we grow in our faith? Hmm. It's not something we eat. We listen to God's word. Yeah, we listen to God's word. Right? Like what we do in church. And uh, whenever you have a chance to hear like, the Bible stories of, all right, this is who Jesus is, and God sent Jesus to save us, and he died on the cross and then he rose again, when we hear those things, or when we read them ourselves, or when we read them at home, or if you're at, like, at our school, you know, we, we teach those things here, and when we do that, that's how we grow in our faith. And God promises when we keep hearing that, we keep growing. And the thing is, you know, eventually, like, your parents probably aren't getting taller now. I mean, maybe, but, you know, most parents, you know, usually when you get when you're an adult, you sort of, you don't keep getting taller. Um, but all our lives, we can keep growing in our faith. We can keep hearing about who Jesus is and what he's done for us, and we keep growing, and that's a good thing. Um, so let's pray and uh, ask God to bless us and, and help us to keep growing in our faith. Dear God, we thank you for sending us Jesus and for having him be our Savior. We also thank you for helping us grow uh, physically and help us get taller and, and giving us food to eat and things like that. But even more importantly, we thank you for helping us grow in our faith and for giving us your word and telling us about Jesus and giving us people in our lives who will tell us about Jesus and who will make sure we hear that good news of how much you love us and that Jesus died and rose again. Uh, help us to always keep hearing that message so we can keep growing in our faith for our whole lives. We pray this in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. All right, thanks so much, you guys. You guys can go back to your seats, and we will continue then with our next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, when you're, when you're driving, you probably don't love construction. But when you're not driving, construction can be a good thing. For example, uh, I know here at Good Shepherd we have plans and, and hopes and we're, we're looking to maybe do some construction, right, with a more education area and possibly even a gym. And that's, it's exciting to think about, but we know there's a lot of planning that has to be done. And thinking of that, I was reading about a church that did some construction. Now, this is a long, long time ago, uh, and this is in Europe, and the year that, this is in like the 1100s when this was starting, so a very long time ago, and the construction of this place, they built, they built the church building, we would call it like a basilica, it's so big, and there's additional buildings. So they had a, a building in this church called a baptistry, which is a whole building just for baptisms. Um, and then they also wanted to do a third building, a bell tower. And, and the bell tower, you know, a lot of times you picture bells at churches, and sometimes it's usually built to, into the church. Well, sometimes, for really big ones, it can have a separate bell tower. So it was in the year 1173 in the city. They're like, all right, we're going to build the bell tower. No problem. And so they started building this, and it took them five years to get to the second floor. So now, normally, building, you know, construction can be slow, but usually it's faster than that. But you think, way back then, they didn't have big cranes necessarily uh, and, and the same kind of technique. So they got to the second floor, and they realized the ground isn't even under this tower. And they realized that was a problem. They ended up taking a break for a while due to lots of different reasons. And it wasn't until years later that they started building again and they realized, oh yeah, this, this isn't even. And I don't know, you know, maybe nowadays they would have scrapped the building project and say, we got to start over. But they'd been doing this for years. And in fact, this whole tower, this bell tower for this church they were building ended up taking almost 200 years to finish. And maybe you know what tower I'm talking about because it's kind of famous now. But it's this one. Uh, we call it, now this is not the real name of the tower, and no one thought, let's build a leaning tower. That's not what they said. Uh, this was meant to be, again, the bell tower in a church, and we know it's in the city of Pisa in, in Italy, and we call it the leaning tower of Pisa. Now, like I said, that, that, there's the uh, basilica, and then there's the baptistry, and then there's this tower. It was meant to be the bell tower, and it's leaning. And it all had to do with the foundation on one side wasn't equal or wasn't really level, and it caused problems. And, and apparently, as they were building it, when they realized it was kind of slightly sinking, they tried to build the side that was sinking, tried to build those floors slightly taller, and they're thinking, maybe we can correct it. Um, but of course, it didn't work. And in fact, in the last 30 years, they've had to do some major things just to keep this tower from falling down. Now, for us, we might think, hey, if I'm ever in Italy, it'd be cool to see it. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a touristy thing. And in fact, there's lots of pictures that you see when, when people visit of them sort of, they sort of stand in front of it, and with the angle of the picture, it almost looks like, hey, I'm, ho I'm holding up the tower, you know, if I put my hands just right. And so it's kind of a tourist destination, but I guarantee you, when they were building this, they were not thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we made made this church a place everyone wants to go because the tower is tipping? No way. They did not want to spend 200 years building a tower for it to be leaning. Now, it, it's kind of worked out amazingly. Um, it's actually probably a minor miracle that this hasn't fallen over and hurt a lot of people. Uh, but that's the case because your foundation is really important, especially for buildings and, and towers especially, but homes too. Um, if you've looked at, at homes, you know, sometimes it's, it's good. They always say, go into the basement, you know, make sure there isn't giant cracks in the floor because that could be a sign the foundation has problems. You know, I found some pictures too of, again, that's a red flag, right? If, you, if you're going to a house and there's a giant crack going through it. And I found a different picture that I think is sort of trying to illustrate this. I don't know if it's an actual photo or just a, like a drawing, but, you know, a problem at the very bottom of the house's foundation 
even if it's just, well, that side just sunk a little bit, it causes problems throughout the rest of the house, and it could get to the point where it, eventually it's, you know, it's unsafe to even be there. Now, if you heard uh, the, our gospel when, when it was read a few moments ago, you know where we're going with this. Um, because there, Jesus is talking about building on the rock, right? But he's not really talking about architecture. He's not really giving us hints, you know, how to find your new house, make sure it's built on the rock. That's not his goal. His goal is, what are we building our life on? Right, our life of faith, what is it based on? Right, is it based on what makes most sense to us at the time? Is our, our life based on what's going to make me happiest in the moment? What's going to give me the least amount of discomfort? How can I walk the path of least resistance in my life somehow and, and, and stay happy, whatever that means? When God tells us, no, you want your foundation to be built on God's word and to continue in that word, like we're talking about with our Christian education today. And that this isn't something that's just meant oh, you know, here's something that's important for children to hear. No, it's, it's really for all ages. Yes, it, it's good to start as children and, and grow in God's word, but it's never too late. As long as, as long as our heart is beating, that means it's a great time for us to continue to grow in our faith. And we're going to hear today that the foundation that we're growing on, that's what's so important, that we want to build on the rock of God's word and put that into practice in our lives. So like I said, we're looking at this from uh, that section we read from Matthew's gospel, and, and I'm just going to hear the first verse again, or read the first verse, and well, maybe you'll notice what, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring up something that stood out to me uh, as I was reading this. It says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, before we even get to what the main point is getting at, when you're talking to someone, it's probably going to be unusual if you see them and the first word out of your mouth is, therefore, and then you, then you keep talking. Therefore is one of those things that usually you've been kind of building up to it, right? And you, you, you've made a point, and then to kind of end that point, you say, therefore, and, and then you kind of make your points. So we realize here, we're already kind of, we're at the end of something Jesus was saying, uh, where he's making his point. So what came before this? And we're not going to spend a ton of time on this, but I think when we look at what come, came before this, we'll see the stakes that we're dealing with here. Um, because it might be easy to hear all this and, and think about it's important to grow in God's word and to see it just as, you know, just as like a helpful hint. You know, um, like... For example, well, if you, if you brush and floss every day, well, it'll help you at those future dental visits. It'll help them go smoothly. You'll probably have less cavities, and you'll be a lot happier. Um, now, there's a lot of people with cavities, and they're still pretty healthy, right? And so it's not the end of the world if they had a couple cavities, thankfully, right? But, but we say, well, you'll be a little happier if you took care of your teeth. This isn't sort of like helpful hint territory. And I think what Jesus says before this kind of illustrates that. Um, well, there's the therefore. Uh, but here's what he says just a few verses before this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus is saying there's going to be a lot of people who call me Lord, Lord Jesus. They're going to say, yeah, this Jesus guy, I'm with him all the way. He's, he's my number one guy. Um, but they say, who don't do the will of my Father in heaven. They won't be the one getting into the kingdom of heaven if they don't do the will of my Father in heaven. Now, we'll talk about the will of his Father in heaven as we go on. But he's saying, there'll be people coming to me thinking they're one of mine, but they're really not. Right? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons, and in your name, perform many miracles? I mean, so these are some people who are pretty invested uh, in Jesus, say, we did all these great things. You know, weren't we doing this in your name? And then Jesus ends this with kind of a harsh statement. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. We think, yikes. You know, that, that is harsh. 
Um, and we think, well, I never, I, I do not want, you know, the day I die or the day the world ends to have Jesus say that to me. You know, that's, that sounds terrible. Um, I, never knew, I never knew you away from me, evildoers. I mean, that's very kind of a sobering word. And so we sort of think, how do I make sure that's not me, right? And that's where Jesus comes with the therefore, and he's telling us what he's telling us today. So again, the reminder for us, this is not just helpful hints to go from a, to go from a B plus to an A. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about life and death, spiritually speaking. Heaven and hell. Um, we're talking about God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. But we know that people reject him. How do we make sure that doesn't happen? That's really what Jesus is talking about. This is, you know, we would say high stakes for this. So I'm just going to read the whole, the whole parable, the whole text, because it's only, it's only four verses. It's pretty simple. But just so we hear it again and we, we get what's being said here. So Jesus says, therefore, remember he's just said all these things about people who said, yeah, Jesus, I'm, I'm with you. And Jesus says, no, you're not. Um, all right, so therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. All right, so I figured we'd go through this, but maybe start on the negative side first, all right, which is kind of the end of the reading. But we can summarize this by don't build on sand, right, which, all right, architecturally maybe that seems obvious. Uh, but we're going to think about what that means for our faith. So again, uh, the first part of that section, you know, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Now, in Jesus' day, um, from what we can tell, there was a lot of much more simple houses, you know, than we would expect today. You know, when you see a house being built and they've dug out and they're, you know, laying cement foundation, many houses at least outside of, you know, the temple complex and a palace or things like that, you know, they're much more simple. And a lot of times it's just kind of, you, you throw four walls on the ground and, and sort of hope for the best. Uh, but we would think, well, obviously, you don't want to put it on sand, right? Sand, you know, can be tough to walk through, let alone you're hoping that your house is going to stand up, right? But we think, okay, what is Jesus talking about? He says it. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice. There's one thing that's kind of hard for us to think about, that in these two scenarios, you know, there's the negative and the positive, both sides are ones that, that hear God's word, right? Both of them hear these words of mine. So we're not talking about, you know, one group who has never heard Jesus and then one group who has. That's not who Jesus is comparing. He's comparing both who hear God's word, and that can maybe get into what, you know, what the difference is. Um, sometimes parents might, might know this thing. There can be a difference between hearing and listening. Of course, it's not just parents. But, you know, there's things where, yes, I have physically heard what has been said, but listening implies that I've heard, I've taken it in, and now I am adjusting, you know, what I am doing accordingly because I've actually listened to what was said. And that's kind of the difference that Jesus is talking about here. In fact, there's another verse that this, uh, this can remind us of. This is from the book of James, uh, and it's sort of making the same point about God's word. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So again, it's not just hearing the sounds. And oh, they know that's interesting. Uh, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says it's like someone who looks at his face in a mirror uh, and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So it's kind of an odd picture, but this idea of, all right, you look at yourself and then I have no idea what I look like. I just saw it, but it's already gone. And they're saying, okay, hearing God's word means doing what it says. As he says there, who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice. So what is that? 
Now, we might go, first of all, to, well, this is about obeying God's commands, and it is, that is a part of it, right, that we want to obey God's commands. And it's easy for us to know what God says, all right, you know, there's even, you know, the Ten Commandments, uh, you shall have no other gods, don't put his name in vain, remember the Sabbath day, honor your father and mother, you know, we could just do the Ten Commandments, and we could be saying, okay, I know what those are, and all of us could look in our lives and say, have I always listened to those Ten Commandments? The answer is going to be no, right? For every single one of us, uh, you know, most of our services have this, you know, confession of sins worked into it, and all of us every single day could say, well, there's, there's ways I failed that. So we could, you know, be starting out with, well, that's, that's a problem, first of all, because I don't always put his words into practice. <coughs> and, you know, I can think of examples of that. And then it's also good to realize that that's, that's not the only thing Jesus is talking about. Because, yeah, we don't always obey him, but there are some times we do. And we can probably think of people who are not Christian at all, but who do lots of good things, right? They help people. Um, they're very kind. They're, they're willing to give money to different, you know, um, causes. Uh, and, and, and so that's, that's not the main thing he's getting at. So the main thing he's getting at is continuing in our faith, the faith that the Holy Spirit puts in our hearts. Right? So it's one thing to, to hear that, all right, there's someone named Jesus, yeah, and it can be easy, and the world kind of has this idea that, oh, faith in Jesus, that just means being nice to people and being kind or whatever. Um, being nice and kind is good, but the main thing Jesus tells us and God tells us is that God recognized that we weren't good. He recognized our sin, and he did something about it by sending Jesus to pay for our sin. And, and so part of hearing his word and putting it into practice is knowing that and looking to Jesus for forgiveness, to bring our sins to him. When we don't do that, or we, when we just sort of shrug it off and we're like, none of this is a big deal, that's part of this picture of not putting it into practice and not living out in our faith. And where it really, where it really hits home are when troubles and difficulties come into our life, because that, that's kind of the next part here. You know, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So again, you can picture if we got four walls that are just kind of all leaning together, and this is a sandy uh, foundation, sure, when, when the elements hit the house, as they're going to do, right? Because there, there's no place in the world where, you know, no storms ever hit this area or something like that. That doesn't exist in this world. So yeah, the, the rain will come down, the streams will rise, the winds blow and beat against that house. That's, that's what it means to be in the world. And we can think of that for our own lives. Jesus doesn't say, the person who hears my word and puts it into practice, there will be no storms or streams or you know, uh, winds blowing against the house, things like that. No, there, there's trouble. Um, in fact, Jesus says that to all of us. In this world, you will have trouble. And what he brings up here is someone who doesn't have that foundation of who God is and what he's promised, when that trouble comes, he talks about the house falling. And it's going to be a picture of faith that that trouble does not strengthen the faith and say, oh, now I know God's with me. But that trouble might cause someone to say, God's left me. He's abandoned me. Or, or someone has lost their faith because they're dealing with difficulties. Or whatever it is, when the end comes and that person has died or Jesus has returned, that person doesn't have faith anymore. All right? That is what Jesus is warning against. That's, that's that picture of Jesus saying, I never knew you. Right? So it's that reminder of something, I don't want that to happen to me and I don't want that to happen to any of you. And so what is, what can we do there? Again, it's about continuing in God's word. Or as we said, build on the rock, not on sand. So again, looking at the positive side of this, what does that look like? Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Again, even if you have only four walls and it's a simple house, if it has a good foundation, you're going to do a lot better. 
right? And th that's the reminder for us. Oh, whoops. Um, and so the reminder for us here is this is about hearing God's word and putting it into practice. And that doesn't just mean obeying him and not sinning, because as we mentioned, we, we fall short of that every day. Because if, So if that was the case, it's already too late. None of us fit this. We are, we're all falling short, right? So how do we build on the rock of Jesus despite the fact that we are sinful? Um, I love there's a conversation that some people had with Jesus where they asked him, you know, how do we do this? How do we do everything that God is requiring us to do? This is from John 6. Um, they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? All right, Jesus, tell us, how do we do this? How can we put everything you say into practice? You know, lay it out for us. And what was Jesus' answer? Jesus said, and the work of God is this, to believe in the one he sent. It's like they were asking, what do I do to do the work God requires me to do? But Jesus is saying, no, the really work that matters is the work that God does, right? And the work that God does is to put that faith in your heart to believe in the one he has sent, to believe in Jesus. So ultimately, the, the ultimate aspect of putting God's word into practice is to believe what God tells us in his word, right? Yes, part of that is about right and wrong and to realize that, okay, I don't want to continue in sin and I want to do the right thing, but we recognize that we fall short on that because we're sinful. But to believe God's promises means I know God sent Jesus to pay for my sin. That God sent Jesus that despite the fact that I'm, a, I'm sinful, despite the fact I don't deserve his blessings, in Jesus has given me those blessings. He says, you're forgiven. That sin is taken away. It's covered in the blood of Jesus. And because Jesus lives, because he rose, you will live. Right? That's the promise that we have. That's the promise and all the promises of God that we, we base our life on. That it's not just... Um, yeah, sin doesn't matter because I guess he'll forgive me anyway. Well, that's, that's not how God put it. Right? He wants us to take it seriously and to remember all he's done for us. Right? Because are we going to face difficulties in our life? Of course. Right? The, the, it's the same description of what happens to the house that's the bad foundation that knocks it over. But that's the, the same thing that's going to happen here. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Will we go through trouble in our lives? Absolutely. We don't know what it'll look like. It'll be different for different people. Again, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But then Jesus said right after that, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Right? We know that as we continue in what God has said, we have the one who has overcome this world. We have this one, despite whatever problems we face, who says, I have something even better for you waiting in heaven. We have the one who says, yes, the sins you committed aren't okay, but I've paid the price for them. Right? So that as we continue in faith, we don't want to continue that life of sin, but we want to rejoice in the forgiveness he gives for us. And we want to live in his strength all our lives. Does that mean things go easy? No, the, there's rain and storms and all, all sorts of problems. But we will stand, not because of our strength, but because of Jesus' strength. And that's the whole point of, of Christian education. It isn't just, I want people to be really good at Bible trivia. And man, they could just know obscure facts about which king came after this one. I mean, that's good. It's good to know the things from the Bible. But the main important is to have that trust that only God can give. It's God, the Holy Spirit, who works that trust from God's word to not just know facts, but to trust God's got me. Am I sinful? Unfortunately, yes. But Jesus has forgiven me. Does God promise that this world will be easy? No, but he's going to be with me. And it's his strength that is going to get me through. That's the promise you have. And that's why we have this encouragement. Continue in God's word. Look for the opportunities to grow in your word. I mean, think about what they said in that Deuteronomy first reading. You know, talk about them at home. Uh, as you sit down and when you get up, you know, continue in the word. Yes, when you're at church, but all throughout your lives, have God's word be that foundation. It's not easy, 
But then finally, it's God's strength that's really doing the work there to continue in his word and to hold on to his promises. That's, that's what Christian education is about. That's what it is to build on God's word. It's not just about behaving better. It's about having the foundation of who God is, what he has promised us, and what he has done in Jesus. So continue in that promise. Build on the rock and rejoice that, that nothing that this sinful world or our own sinful hearts or the devil himself sends against us, nothing can get past the strength that our Savior has for us. Amen. I invite you then to please stand. And we'll continue at this time by singing the song, uh, You Are God, We Praise You. So we'll sing this together. You may be seated, and we'll continue at this time with the offering. While the offering is being gathered, I invite you to fill out the Connect card that you find on each row, and those viewing us online can fill out the online Connect card also. Thanks.
One thing that we like to do at Good Shepherd is give out Bibles um, to families when their children reach second grade, uh, part of this encouragement to continue in God's Word. Now, I'm not 100% sure if we have any second graders here. So if any family has a second grader here, can you let me know in some way? <laughs> okay, because they might be at the next service and not here, and that's okay. All right, I don't think we have any at this service. Uh, Mr. Dan Ludwig, uh, one of our... Uh, Board of Child Discipleship members was going to help hand it out, but all right, they'll be so those are waiting, but we we will give those out later. So now we'll continue with the Lord have mercy section. I invite you to please stand. Faithful to me and hear my prayer. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And merciful Lord, comforter and teacher of your faithful people, increase in your church the knowledge of your will. Strengthen the hearts of those who hope in you and show them the depth of your promises. Let our children follow the light of your word and follow you with eager, eager footsteps through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. ever shine upon you. The Lord grant you peace for all your days. We'll continue with our closing hymn. You may be seated for this hymn.
Once again, good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd. It's great to be with you here today to praise our God together and receive his gifts to us in his word. Uh, a couple of announcements. First of all, special thanks to all um, who helped out yesterday. I know our church and school had a, a float in the Burnsville uh, Fire Muster Parade and had tons of people there for it, and it went really well, and uh, very thankful for that. And then we had a, um, a fall festival also yesterday afternoon, and we did get some sprinkles, shall we say, during it, but uh, it still went very well. Um, I'm not sure if these pictures are from that, or if this is from, uh, this, this, this is Pioneers? BB, oh, this is from BBS, okay. So anyway, um, so again, thanks to all who helped yesterday. Uh, I also want to mention uh, there's a pre-call meeting tonight uh, at 6.30 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. District President Dennis Klatt will be here to discuss Good Shepherd's call for a second pastor. Uh, the meeting is intended to provide the congregation the opportunity to become familiar with the scriptural doctrine of divine calls in addition to the Wells calling process. It will also provide the district president the opportunity to learn about the ministry setting and congregation needs of Good Shepherd. The information provided will guide him in the selection of candidates for the call list he will provide to the congregation. Um, so all members, men, women, children of the congregation are strongly encouraged to participate in this incredibly important process. Um, I'd love it if you could be here this evening. I know there is also like a part of this where there's a survey where uh, you can fill out and then the district president will take those with you know, needs that you see and things like that. So uh, everyone is able to give that um, input to the district president. So I hope you can make it for that. Um, faith Night, uh, with talking about uh, Christian education, Faith Night is a big part of that, of how we do that here at Good Shepherd. So that is uh, starting up again this Wednesday. And just to mention the schedule again, 5.30 p.m. is a meal that's, that's free for everyone. Um, and there's free will offering, but um, it, it's free for everyone at 5.30. And then Bible studies of different ages from 6 to 7 p.m. That includes uh, confirmation class for the 7th and 8th graders, uh, and other things. Now, I'm assuming that you are going to tell us some about that, uh, Matt. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, guys. My name is Matt. I will be doing the adult Bible study um, here in a few weeks for Faith Night. We're going to be doing a book by C.S. Lewis called The Problem of Pain. Everyone experiences pain from infancy to death. No one's exempt from it. And C.S. Lewis goes through the Bible and explains how God uses pain as his calling card. God is no foreigner to pain and grieving. He destroyed the earth because of the flood, because he grieved. Um, he was grieved with the hardness of the Pharisees' hearts in Mark 3. Lazarus' tomb, he wept. Um, in Luke 19, he wept over Jerusalem because they failed to recognize him and the impending destruction. And then on the cross. He's a God who understands us and uses our pain. So I hope you would Come along, join us um, for a really, really terrific study. You guys will truly enjoy it and learn a lot. Thanks, Matt. And can I ask you, Matt, yeah. the book starts not the first week. It's like the third week or something like that? Correct. We're going to okay. do two weeks of, I believe it's the hard sayings of Jesus. Uh, Paul Worth is going to run that. And then starting week three, we'll do the book. I would highly suggest if you're going to do the book, uh, you can pick it up. It's like five bucks on Amazon. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, the church will provide one for you. Uh, free of charge. No worries. Um, and start by reading the first chapter before you come. If not, we'll do a quick review and catch you up. So no issues. Yeah, and the church has already ordered a bunch. So if someone wants one, let me know and we'll give it to you right away. So thank you. Um, all right. It seems like a long way off. Trunk or treat is coming up, folks. Uh, if you've gone to any store, you know, they have their full Halloween, you know, stuff set up. Uh, but yeah, it's a big community event. It does need a lot of volunteers from our church and school. Candy donations, you know, if that sounds familiar. Um, there is going to be a, a link coming out in the weekly update email for ways you can help, like if you want to use your trunk uh, for that. Um, there is the bulletin board in that, that uh, kind of middle hallway, uh, we'll have some of that too. Um, and eventually, if you want to bring in candy donations, there'll be a bin in the main, the main entryway where you can bring those. Uh, and like I said, there'll be links coming out. But just start thinking about that uh, if you're able to help us with that this year. Um, we have the triumphant return today of donuts and refreshments uh, in the 
fellowship hall gym. Uh, so by all means, join us for those. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, back for that. And also, greet one another. Uh, and if you can find someone to greet that you already know, that's always great. Uh, if you can find someone to greet that you don't really know very well, that's really important. Uh, so try to do both of that uh, and, and greet one another today. God's blessings to you um, as you rejoice that God gives us his word and he gives us that solid foundation that his strength is what we get to build our lives on. So thanks, God's blessings, and we'll see you again.